Thanks very, very much. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust, lifting you from being stationary to traveling 25 times the speed of sound. Truly the ride of a life. Doing 10 kilometers a second when we're in space. You snap your fingers, the space shuttle's gone 10 kilometers. Five times faster than your average rifle bullet. It's an amazing experience, and it's an experience that very, very few of us have had a chance to uh, really have. And I'd like to share that with you and get a sense for what it's like being part of these amazing amazing, unique missions. Eight and a half minutes after we lift off, we have an image like this, absolutely spectacular. We've opened the payload bay doors of the space shuttle. We're looking down at the Pacific Ocean, the lattice work of clouds that you can see in the lower atmosphere as you're orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. It's an amazing experience being part of that unique group of humans that's left the surface of the planet to be able to go and explore. What's truly remarkable about this, though, is literally uh, 90 minutes after we lift off, we've gone around the world once and we're back over Florida looking down at Kennedy Space Center. There's the launch pad that we were on before we lifted off to go into space. The guests that came to watch us lift off are stuck in their cars in traffic trying to get back <laughs> to the hotel, you know. We've gone around the world once, they're still... <laughs> what can you do? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. But you know, it's a remarkable experience and watching a shuttle lift off is truly a, it's an emotional, it's a visceral experience. You're standing there, seven and a half million pounds of thrust, you feel the ground beginning to shake before you actually begin to hear the power of the three main engines and the two solid rocket boosters. The contrail that's left after we depart truly captures the imagination of everyone on the ground that's left looking at this void, wondering where we've gone, what we're doing as we go forward and explore space. And it's truly a time for all of us to reflect on the magnitude of uh, the accomplishment. My second space flight took place last August. We went to the International Space Station to help build the space station. Truly one of the remarkable stories about the space station is countries from all over the world, multiple cultures, languages, coming together to build the most incredible piece of technology in the history of the human species with fit checking at first, bringing these components together, plugging them together in space, and that they actually work. Truly a remarkable achievement. But this time when I was uh, working in space, I had a chance to work directly with the Canadian contribution to the space program. All of us should feel really proud of the magnitude of this contribution. In this photograph, you can see all three robotic devices developed by the Canadian space program, McDonald Detweiler, here in Toronto. There's the shuttle, uh, Canada Arm, on the uh, side of the shuttle. Over here, we see the, for the station, space station, and right down here is the orbiter boom system, which is enabling uh, NASA to inspect the tiles on the undersurface of the orbiter. Very few of us in Canada recognize that the shuttle could not have returned to flight if it were not for the contribution of McDonald Detweiler in building this orbiter boom to inspect the tiles on the undersurface of the orbiter. But the true magic of flying in space occurs when you go outside. It's an unbelievable experience because now you're within your own spacecraft inside a pressure suit 4.3 PSI. You can hear your breathing as you take breath after breath, working over a course of six and a half, seven hours, building the space station, bringing things together. But truly what's spectacular is you have a chance to think about the magnitude of what you're doing. And I remember standing on the end of the arm on our second spacewalk, looking at this incredible view of the Earth, feeling incredibly proud to be wearing the Canadian flag on the side of my spacesuit, riding an arm that's got Canada proudly displayed on the side of it, look at the of the space shuttle with Canada on one side, on the robotic arm, Canada on the boom, and thinking, wow, what a unique experience to be here, to be representing our country as one of the major spacefaring nations of the world. It was truly, truly a remarkable experience. The view, of course, is out of this world. What's <laughs> eh, not fair? You know, I was up all night trying to figure out what I... Anyway, <laughs> it's my attempt at being a comedian. But the view is truly remarkable, and you're riding on the end of the arm, you know, you're traveling a kilometer a second, and you do have moments to actually look at the Earth beneath you. We could get into a whole discussion about whether it's above you or beneath you, but the bottom line is the view is tremendously compelling. Another picture taken when we're over the Pacific Ocean with the clouds in the background, absolutely spectacular. But you know, every 45 minutes, you get to see a sunset and a sunrise. <laughs> People ask me, has spaceflight ruined anything for you? 
Yeah, I have no patience for transatlantic flying. I, you know, what, <laughs> what is the deal? Anyway, you look at this and you see that fine blue line of the atmosphere. And it's remarkable because no matter where you stand on environmental issues, you come away realizing that this is all that protects all of us here on Earth. This is the only thing that keeps us all alive on our planet. It's absolutely amazing. And as I'm watching this, remember, we're going into a night pass, so the temperature is dropping. It's going to go to about minus 70 degrees Celsius. I turn the helmet lights on, and even with the lights on my spacesuit, the black void of space engulfs you. And you go from being in this amazingly lit environment, looking at the spectacular view of the world, to black nothingness for 45 minutes. It's an amazing experience being totally isolated. Of course, you wait another 45 minutes, Minutes, the sun comes up. But what's surprising about this, you've got to love it, when the sun comes up, you feel yourself getting warm first. You can feel the temperature begin to rise. And all of a sudden, you know that life-giving property of the sun. You truly feel actually outside doing a spacewalk. And you can feel the, yourself getting warmer and warmer. And then the sun comes up over the horizon. And literally, it comes up over the course of seconds as opposed to many, many minutes, which happens, of course, on Earth. It's a truly remarkable experience, again, getting a chance to look at the Earth. But when we look at the Earth from inside a spacecraft and from outside a spacecraft doing a spacewalk, we can see the effects that the human species are having on the Earth. It starts off fairly innocently. You look and you see something like this and you say, wow, that's a linear cloud. What is that? It's actually a contrail being left by an airplane flying in the lower Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of around 40,000 feet. Of course, you can't see the airplane. I'm standing on the end of the robotic arm looking down at this, but it's this fine, magic white line being drawn across the horizon. Absolutely spectacular to see evidence of human habitation on Earth from being that far out in space. The other thing, though, is that when you look down on the Earth, you see different types of effects of human habitation. And of the examples of pollution, this is a picture of Shenyang, China. And needless to say, you can appreciate the snow around the city, but you can also appreciate the catastrophic effect that pollution is having. And you can see, of course, plumes of smoke in the atmosphere as uh, industries keep uh, putting various compounds out into the air itself. And again, it makes you sit back and reflect. You know, you're, you're standing on the end of an arm, you're working, doing a spacewalk, building the space station, you see images like this, and it gives you pause to reflect, what's it that we're actually doing here on the Earth? We get a chance to experience the best of human emotions. We also get a chance to experience the worst of human emotions. Here's a picture of New York, and you'll probably look at this and go, wow, that's really impressive. There's Manhattan and Central Park, you know. But what's this? Those are the World Trade Centers, 9-11. The crew on board the International Space Station was looking out the window of the space station, saw this image. They didn't know what was happening. They called Mission Control in Houston, said, what is going on in New York? We've just taken her, and it looks like there's this huge fire in, in uh, Manhattan. And of course, they found out about 9-11. That's how they were informed. So when we're out in space, we have an amazing capability of seeing the whole human condition, how we, the human species, are impacting our planet, the role that we're playing on our planet with pollution, and the effect that we have on each other, and uh, how we interact with one another on the planet. Absolutely incredible. Ted Rosenthal was a poet. He wrote for the New York Times back in the 70s. He died of leukemia. In this, uh, he wrote a, a book called How Can I Not Be Among You? And in his book, he basically said, I've learned something really important, that you can live a lifetime in a moment. And it's true. When you're standing out on the end of a robotic arm in space, I'm looking down at this image of the Earth, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, literally in less than a second, Beneath me is the planet upon which the history of the entire human species has taken place. 